So the archives of the first uh, Jewish archaeological society, which was established in Palestine in 1913, were discovered in 2015 at the Institute of Archaeology of the Hebrew University. I won't uh, present the discovery because Veta will do it in the after me. So the records since then were sorted and organized in order to get a general understanding of the history of one of the crucial institutions involved in the establishment practice and development of archaeology within the Jewish community of Palestine and then in Israel. So in this presentation, I would like to present the history of this society from its inception until 1948 along its archival grain. So as if we were opening and going through some of its boxes and files together. So just to briefly present the foundation of the society, uh, it was founded at the turn of the 20th century by members of the Jewish community of Palestine and immigrants involved in the emerging Zionist movement. Uh, this, institutions this institution was devoted to the scientific study of Palestine in general. They urged the Jews of Palestine to engage in the practice of archaeology and the preservation of Jewish heritage in Palestine. Uh, it's interesting to know that at the time, the Jewish community was, but also the diaspora, showed interest in the foreign archaeological activities in Palestine. Uh, several publications on the subject can be found in various local Hebrew newspapers. Uh, also, members of the Jewish community attended conferences organized by the various foreign institutions established in Jerusalem since uh, the second uh, half of the 19th century. Also, it's interesting to know that the foundation of the society followed the establishment of the Society for the Preservation of Jewish Historical Monuments. In Hebrew, it is called uh, the Society for the Acquisition of Jewish Historical Monuments. Uh, the purpose of that society was to buy historical sites across Palestine, and it was established and in partnership with the Jewish National Fund and the Office of Palestine in Jaffa. A few years before the, these societies were established, Eliezer Ben Yehuda called for the creation of an institute devoted to the study of Eretz Israel and the excavation of Jewish remains. The GPS and the Society for the Preservation of Jewish Historical Monuments, where you can see on the first uh, this is, well, it's not very clear, but uh, it's their col uh, their open letter, their call for contribution. Uh, they were both presided over by David Yelin, who was a key political figure at the time. The program of the society was broad. It aimed at the study of Palestine. However, most of the objectives of the society revolved around the study of Jewish remains especially from the periods of the writing of the Mishnah and the Talmud, the collecting of antiquities in order to establish a museum of national antiquities. Uh, the founding of these institutions needs to be placed in the contents of the, the Zionist movement in Palestine. It encouraged the development of a new society through the development of a renewed cultural and educational system. It's interesting to notice that most of the members, uh, founding members of the society were involved in the revival of the Hebrew language. So I believe that the aim of the society was also to produce scientific knowledge in Hebrew that would accompany the, Zi the new Zionist educational system. So most of the archives of the period of 1913 to 1914, because the society then stopped functioning uh, when the First World War started, are located in David Yelin's personal archives at the Central Zionist Archive. So, here you can also, the, the society also had a branch in Jaffa, which was more devoted to natural sciences, uh, and uh, Avram Baal Rosenstein was one of uh, its founders, and he presented uh, in, uh, he was connected to the, he was part of the second Aliyah and 
really try to uh, encourage uh, the second Aliyah to get involved into uh, the practice of uh, archaeology and the knowledge of Palestine. And he published in Apoelat Sayyir. So, uh, after, the f after the end of the First World War, the society was re-established at the end of 19, the year 1919. So it was really during the British mandate that archaeological activities led by Jewish institutions grew in significance. So the reestablishment of the society can be followed in details in the minute books of the GPES, which uh, I sh it's very unclear, but you can see the they have we have found many um, minute books from. 1919 until the 1950s. And at that time, new members joined the society, such as Eliezer Ben Yehuda, Yitzhak Ben Svi, Leo Arye Meir, and Yeshua Press. Yeshua, sorry. Uh, so the majority of the archives of the GPS are dated from the British Mandate period, and they principally, principally consist of correspondences of uh, the society with different bodies regarding the organization and financing of excavations, the collecting of antiquities, which also was accompanied by uh, increasing awareness to the practice of archaeology and to the preservation of historical monuments and antiquities, the publication of articles and books on archaeology uh, and on the history and geography of Palestine, and also activities regarding the popularization of the discipline. So, the progress of the society in the field of archaeology was in, f in part due to the, su the support offered by the British government to the Zionist pro project, who facilitated the recognition of its local scientific institutions and their objectives following the mandate pr <coughs> principles and the Balfour Declaration. So the society was integrated in the various international bodies and societies it established during the British mandate, such as the Archaeological Advisory Board or the Palestine Oriental Society. And for example, also, uh, the Zionist Commission asked the society in 1920 if a uh, student can be integrated in the British School of Archaeology in Jerusalem, and in, I believe that this was Yitzhak Ben Svi. They also uh, tried to, the GPS always tried to promote itself uh, um, in British mandate uh, archaeological structures. For example, they asked, after not being invited in, 1920, in 1926, to the Archaeological Congress in Syria and Palestine, which was organized by the British and French um, governments in order to promote uh, archaeological uh, activities in the region. They were, eventually they were invited, but they're always trying to promote themselves. So, um, the GPS was also supporting, supported during its first first years by the World Zionist Organization, and it was constantly trying to find the support of proto-national institutions like the Vad Leumi. It appealed frequently to the Zionist Commission. The society presented itself, uh, archaeology, I'm quoting David Yelin, as one of the most important tasks in the revival of our people and country. And he, f he, s he followed by saying, now that we are about to revive the land, how can we leave the other subjects to others? It's, it is our national duty to start working or to develop our work. The objectives of the society were actually presented by its <coughs> first archaeologist, Nahum Slush, during the 13th Zionist Congress in 1923, reinforce, reinforcing the national dimension of their work. So once the society was reestablished, it could engage in its first excavation. So I will present its Mm, most known excavations, which was the one at Hamat Tiberias, and then in the Kidron Valley. So, the first uh, uh, Hebrew archaeological excavation took place in December 1920, and it's very, it was 
um, directed by Nahum Slush. Uh, there are many reports from Nahum Slush during his excavation, so it's very interesting because it offers us a, a, an idea of how he practiced archaeology at the time. I just want to quote the uh, part of one of his reports, which shows how archaeology was received by the Jewish community at the time. So he said, members of the society are, su are, suspecting, uh, are suspe sus suspecting us for, of being bourgeois who are taking advantages of the workers of the Jewish colonies. And then he says, my heart cries about the manners of the young generation of people which are about to build the land around me. And then he follows, regarding the excavations, the workers as individuals, some of them are nice. But as a group, they do everything to make my work harder. They pile stone, dafka, on the place where they destroyed the gate, and they won't move them. They are making it difficult by moving the dirt and using my workers. I'm not, a, I'm not writing this to complain, but to tell you that there isn't much progress in the last days. Uh, Nahum Slush's reports are very difficult to read. He's, he writes really, really small in very small letters and likes to write in the margins of the and so another ex one day the GPS uh, organized the excavations in the Kidron Valley in 1923 archives also are interesting because they show us how uh, the, the relationship of archaeologists with the also orthodox community so I also would like to briefly uh, read a, a part of an archive, which was a report of the society. Uh, in, in the, during the months of March 1923, a lot of rain fell, and one of the walls of the tomb of Abs Absalom fell. Uh, so then they explained that the incident caused great excitement among Jerusalem's orthodoxy, and there were a few f fanatics who demanded that the work should be stopped completely. On Sunday, March the 16th, over a hundred persons, chiefly yeshiva students, assembled around the excavation and tried to interrupt the, the work. But following the intervention of three of the rabbis of the religious court, the public was appeased and the work proceeded peacefully. Following the consent of the Sephardic community to build the wall that fell down, we could remove all the earth that covered the space between the tomb of Absalom and the tomb of Geosaphat, which gradually, gradually became completely exposed. So the, those were the first activities of the society. And then in 1925, the Hebrew University, as you all know, was established. And this affected the society's role in the Hebrew archaeological scene. Because the university imposed itself as the only uh, the sole institution involved in Jewish sciences. It promoted similar program as, as the society by promoting the practice of Jewish archaeology, which was the equivalent of Christian archaeology at the time. And um, also they shared the same financial uh, networks. So because the society, uh, in order to finance its work, appealed to many donors and um, institutions abroad, m mainly in the United States, but also in France, in England, uh, also in <coughs> Egypt, uh, and um, in France also. So this led, the fact that uh, they shared the same financial networks led to a conflict with the Hebrew University, which only ended in the 1930 and prevented the society to continue its archaeological work. So once the the conflict with the university stopped. The, the society became, I noticed, highly involved in the transmission of archaeology to the general public, as if the, the conflict led to a redefinition of the roles of the society in the Hebrew archaeological um, uh, space, landscape. Uh, I also think that the society's history uh, should be seen in the context of the growth and development of the Jewish community at the time, which fostered a distinct edu educational system and scientific atmosphere, cultivating the knowledge of the land and the development of the field of Jewish history. 
All these changes were also connected to the de desire of establishing and developing a new Hebrew culture and identity in connection with the land, and the society was highly involved in, uh, in all these activities. Also, the um, increase in of the public activities of the society should be also understood in the context of the Great Revolt and the more offensive political positions of the Zionist movement at the time. Because we see in the archive that after 1938, they all the... <coughs> public uh, printed documents that they uh, publish are very, very nationalist and are constantly trying to show how archaeology is helping uh, the Jewish nation to connect to the land. So uh, the society was also involved in the field of the Yediyat Aretz. It actually created a committee in, 19, in the 1930s in, in the 1940s in order to change the Zionist ed educational curriculum and they tried to include archaeology. Uh, so that was one of the public activities of the GPS. They also organized conferences, visits of archaeological sites. They tried to establish a museum in Ken at Bitzalel, which was located there until 1927. Then the collections of the society were transferred to the Museum of Jewish Antiquities at the Hebrew University. Um, the conferences of the society are a have produced a lot of documents and they are a large part of the archives of the society. And also, these include many files which were gifts, which were given at the end of every conference of the society. So the, the Conferences of the Yediyat Aretz were uh, started officially in 1943. Uh, Shmuel Yedin at the time was the one that promoted the organization of uh, these uh, conferences. It, it was a way for them, we can see in the archives, they were very worried about the destructions and the looting of antiquities and historical uh, monuments at the time uh, in, in the context of the development of um, Jewish colonies. And they were also very worried about the lack of interest of the young generation in archaeology. So these conferences and public activities were aimed at trying to interest and uh, the, um, the Jewish community in Palestine. So those are examples of the documents that they would give the, the, the participants in the conferences. So you have, this map is a map that was produced by the Jewish National Fund. These, uh, these maps were very, were used for propaganda by the Jewish National Fund in order to obtain uh, money to continue the development of uh, settlements. Uh, and this shows that the Jewish National Fund financed parts of the conferences. They also would always give a printed copy of um, an antiquity or iconography and a, bo a book from someone involved in uh, the Zionist uh, organization. In this case, it's Menachem Musishkin's book, who was at the time at the head of the Jewish National Fund. The second, uh, they also, this is the gift the f this uh, file of gifts. It's interesting to notice that they would always give a calendar published by the Jewish National Fund every year. And, and those are the, they produced after the 1930s a lot of uh, printed documents in order to obtain money and uh, as I said, to interest the Jewish community and the diaspora to archeology. span where they clearly uh, explain that their role, are, their role is scientific, but also national and uh, uh, popular. And they uh, also publish, the members of the society published many articles in the local Hebrew press. And this is a large part also of the archives. Where I, I, I integrated them in this, collection called Varia, which uh, 
So this is after 1948, uh, the society will be renamed the Israel Exploration Society at the demand of uh, David Ben-Gurion in English. In, Heb in Hebrew it will just take out, uh, it will just change uh, its name. Uh, it's interesting to notice that in the month of December 1948, the society organized in a country uh, in war a conference in Jerusalem uh, which was in ta called Jerusalem in the past and present during the period of uh, Hanukkah. At this conference, many uh, political figures attended, where uh, they and military figures, where sometimes they called the uh, military to make sure that antiquities are not being destroyed uh, during military operations. So I, this conference was also the opportunity to appeal to the Jewish community to preserve antiquities in a period of conflict. After 1948, uh, the society became a key national institution involved in the found, founding of Israeli archaeology, its research program and its administration, and it organized the first Israeli uh, uh, licensed excavation in uh, Tel Kassile, as you can see. Uh, the archives of the period of 1948 until the 1960s are less important, but files related to the excavations and archaeological research led by the Israel Exploration Society are uh, numerous, and there they were, um, I assembled them in a file called Research Archives. The same for uh, archives related to conferences, they're very important for this period. But there isn't so many uh, minutes of conferences of the society or correspondences. That's it. I hope that uh, you will want to come and see the archive and uh, I think it deserves to be promoted. It deserves to be promoted because it has a lot of documents that could renew and uh, offer many, many different uh, perspectives and uh, research. It's very rich.